buongiorno. Um, so um, thank you for the invitation to, to come here. Uh, so I will um, present you the impact evaluation study of a French program, of a French CCT, of a French conditional cash transfer. So it's not only in Paris, but it's all around France. So um, the project is ongoing, so I'm not presenting results. Results will be only available uh, almost in one year. So I will just present you the underlying hypothesis of the study. Um, the methodology along with the context of the program. Um, so that's just to give you ideas on, on, on the impact evaluation study. But first of all, I will present you the, the Poverty Action Lab. So it's um, this research center that is, um, in fact, it's a network of professors all around the world. Um, I'm based in the Parisian office. And what we do is that we do impact evaluation of social, social policies, um, public uh, programs run by NGOs or government, government organizations. And um, in many dimensions, it could be education, labor market, conditional gas transfers, microcredit, health, um, access to water, for example, along many other ones, also agricultural interventions. And um, what we, so what is impact evaluation though? Among the big world of evaluation, there is a smaller, smaller world of impact evaluation. So among this big world of monitoring and evaluation, there is a smaller world of impact evaluation. And an impact evaluation, what it, what it is an impact evaluation? So the basis of an impact evaluation is the comparison of two groups. One group that benefits from a certain intervention and another group that is not benefiting from that intervention. And among this world of impact evaluations, there are several methodologies that try to reconstruct this non-beneficiaries group that we call control group. And we choose one methodology that is the random selections of beneficiaries. And so we will randomly select and decide who will benefit from the program and who will not benefit from the program. Okay, so there is always a method of selection of beneficiaries, right? It could be the first come, first served. It could be uh, the most motivated one. Um, but with this methodology, we are giving up to a list of potential beneficiaries to each of the individuals. Individuals who could be schools or it could be hospitals, right? We are giving each of them the same chance, the same probability of having the chance to participate to the program. Um, so, so what we choose is as a particular methodology for impact evaluation, so it's the use of randomized evaluation to answer questions that are critical to poverty alleviations, as I said, in many dimensions, education, labor market, etc. And what we have like a double objective, so first is to do policy recommendation and capacity building and also provide scientific evidence, rigorous evidence, and trying to um, help understanding what policies work and what policies do not work. And as I said, JPAL collaborates with governments, with NGOs all around the world and international organizations. And we really aim to create a culture of demanding evidence to back up policy, right? To really produce rigorous evidence to help us understanding what works and what does not work. So the, like the first message of this slide is just to think about how we select beneficiaries. Right? So this is a big subject, how, um, how, how is the selection of the beneficiaries. Um, here it is just a so basic uh, example of what is a randomized control trial how is the life of an impact evaluation with this methodology. So uh, if we have the chance to, to, that, to, to, to run a baseline, like an, an initial survey, to, to build the, the list of potential beneficiaries that could um, potentially apply to, to receive a program, with this method of randomizations, and there is a many ways to, to conduct this randomization, there is many ways of, of conducting this lottery, we will randomly select who will be assigned to the treatment or who will benefit from the, from the program. 
that is what we call treatment, and who will not, that we call the control group. And what we are interested in, in, in knowing is what is happened during all the intervention, right? So we will try to think when we will survey again these individuals, or again, it could be schools, it could be hospitals, with a follow-up survey that it could be a midline, or we would call that an endline, and we will compare these two groups. So this methodology will ensure us to minimize all the, the biases we can, we can have. So with these methodologies in the analysis stage, we will know that at the end, all differences that we will be able to observe between groups, between the treatment and the control groups, are due thanks to the interventions, thanks to the program, thanks to the CCT programs, and not because of motivation and not because of better information, etc. Right? So this is the underlying idea of the, of the selection method. So with this methodology and with this, with this study, we are going to isolate the impact of the programs from any other effects like economic crisis or any, any other contextual effect that could have an impact, uh, that could, could influence the impact. Right? And all, all this motivation and all this heterogeneity we cannot really observe and measure on, on individuals. So the second message of this slide would be like if you in the journal or in a newspaper or in another conference, like you hear about the impact of a certain program or 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 or, or what is the, the, the assessment of a certain policy, just you are ask yourself like is there a control group? Because if you're talking about impact evaluations, there should be a control group. And the second thing you have to, to have in mind is how this control group has been constructed. Okay? So the idea is that to be really sure that what we are observing is the impact of the program and not something else, not something that is mixed between the impact of the program and other unobserved characteristics of the participants that we cannot really um, isolate. So, is this difference between the two groups is due just because of the program or because of something else? So, this is just the, the, the thing you have to have in mind once you read and the impact of a program was this or that. Um, so, now to present you the, the, the program in France, the, the conditional cash transfer in France, so I will try to be uh, very short. So, it's a standard conditional cash transfer to a very particular uh, fraction of the youth in France. So it's, um, as I said, all, all around France. It's the youth between 18 and 22 years old that attend um, these eight <coughs> employment agencies that are called Mission Locale. Um, and so this conditional cash transfer, uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a program that is deployed all around France um, for two years, and it's an amount so it's a monetary transfer that is fixed per month and for uh, unemployed youth, for example, and for youth that have part-time jobs with low wages, it also stays as a complement of um, their low wages. And this monetary transfer is conditional that the youth are followed by a counselor. In this type of agencies, there are, of, of course, a lot of counselors, Counselors um, specialized in education, doctors, um, in labor, labor market, job search, etc. And we, we do observe that um, youth do not really integrate into those, um, to those programs. These uh, agencies offer a, many, a menu very large of services and um, these youth seem to have some kind of difficulties enriching really integrate integration into these agencies, despite the huge availability of services. And this we can observe, when I say inter integration, I mean is, uh, are the youth attending the agency program? Are they um, responding to job interviews? Uh, are they um, going to trainings? Or are they uh, doing active job search, etc. So this is a very particular disadvantage and marginalized um, youth. 
So as I said, it's a fixed um, cash transfer. It could be a comp complement of low wages, and uh, it's conditional on the fact that the youth goes once per month to, to these agencies to meet its counselor, right? Uh, for, the, for, for two years. So we, I'm just presenting now like two reasons that why these youth um, normally uh, do, not, uh, do not really uh, adhere uh, to these programs is first the existence of financial constraints that are faced by youth uh, that reflects uh, of course a lack of financial autonomy for them that they lead to investment choices in professional and educational career that are very different from those they would have done in the absence of such constraints. And when I talk about investment choices, I mean uh, looking for act actively looking for jobs or applying for a certain trainings or um, uh, enrolling in universities or other type of, of uh, educational, uh, non-formal education. So first it's like this idea of um, uh, lack of financial autonomy and the second one is that um, to, to, to really um, other, the adherence to these programs uh, that the, these agencies, uh, employment agencies they propose is really considered like a binding investment for youth because costs occur immediately while benefits will occur in the future. So it's this problem that every human being faces, it's this problem of temporal uh, inconsistency, but uh, like psychologists say that is a cruci crucial um, dimension of youth behavior. This inconsistency in engaging in, 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 a, in, a, in a career, for example, where the costs are, uh, occur immediately, but the benefits are in the future. So um, our methodology, um, so, just, just one um, last message of this slide, in fact, I just came back. Um, the idea is that when we study a program and when we do want to do an impact evaluation of a program, we do really want to have a logical framework, a causality chain of these programs, and we do really need to identify what are the needs of the population, and what are the inputs the organization can, can put there by these needs and then what, what would be the outputs the organization can be in control of these outputs and then which are the long-term impacts we are expecting so this idea of causality chain or logical framework maybe you 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 you, you heard that um, this must be very clear Um, so about the, the methodology, so how we, we did this um, uh, impact evaluation study. So we took, like there are of course many, many uh, aid agencies for employment seeking for youth in, in France. We, um, our sample is of 82 aid agencies all in, in France. And what we, what we did that was, it was really, um, really uh, the results were very good is that we took um, all the inscriptions uh, uh, of the youth in two months last year February and March so youth can, can go to, to these um, aid agencies and register for, for what I said there standard program it's like the basic programs and um, so just a few words what is this standard program this standard program is um, a, a program that a service that is offered by these aid agencies and it consists of a very small cash transfer that is not fixed and is subject to the decision of the counselor so it's the counselor who will decide whether he gives or not and the amount 